I turned Gloomwood from a game that looks like this into one that looks like this. And in the process of doing so, I made it able to run on the PC equivalent of a toaster with a screen. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, anybody could do that. Just turn down the settings to minimum. Wrong. Here's what Gloomwood looks like at max settings, here's the same scene on minimum settings, and here it is on my version. One of the reasons I wanted to do this video was... Well, I just wanted another excuse to play Gloomwood, okay? But another big reason is that the game actually receives a fair amount of negativity online because of its outdated visuals, which is complete nonsense if you think about it. Gloomwood is not aiming to be some hyper-realistic, asset store, spooky survival horror game. If you know anything about the game or the genre, it's very obvious that Gloomwood takes a lot of inspiration from the Thief series. And despite being made 20 some odd years later with a new engine and countless advantages advancements in technology, it manages to pull off a similar style pretty well. But I'm not even saying that Gloomwood is directly copying Thief's art style. It's kind of got its own thing going on, which works pretty well for it. So yeah, it may remind you of some old games, but that's not even close to saying it has bad visuals which is exactly where I come in. How did I manage to make this polished 2023 indie game look like an old RuneScape clone from the 90s? And yes, I'm aware RuneScape didn't officially come out until 2001, it's just the closest game I can think of. Well, similarly to some of my past hacking and modding videos, the first step was to disassemble the project. After that, I spent a long time studying the game's rendering code, covering things like lighting, animations, particle effects, and a whole lot of other stuff I'll just gloss over to keep this part short. Research was useful and all, but I didn't really know how much I'd be able to mess with the rendering before completely breaking the game. So I opened up the project and got to tinkering. Being a Unity developer myself, I figured the most logical starting point were the quality settings that are controlled by the engine. Oh no, wall of big scary code, except it's not actually complex at all. Here, just let me break it down for you. This block is some code I was able to inject into the game to modify the quality settings. Disabling VSync is pretty self-explanatory. I mean, you can toggle it in-game, but it was easier for me to just bundle all my changes together in one script. The target frame rate is actually the max FPS cap, which can only go up to 300 with the in-game menus. But I figured, why not shoot for 999 to see what breaks? Billboards are basically just images that always face the player, giving the illusion of 3D. So turning off that feature just makes things a little bit uglier. LOD, or level of detail, are lower quality models that the game switches to when objects are far away to save on rendering. Even if you don't recognize the term, you've definitely seen this before in all sorts of games. Setting this to zero means the lowest quality models will be used at every distance. Particle raycasts are used for collision checking particles, among some other things. So without this setting, they'll just fall through the floor or whatever. Pixel lights are higher quality versions of lights, usually rendered near the player. Turning them off means all lights will use lower quality rendering styles. And next up is... Hey, is this too much code for you already? Yeah, I know, engine settings are pretty basic stuff, but that's gonna change real soon, so just hold tight for a second there. Skin weights affect character and enemy animation quality, soft particles let particles blend in better with the world, and soft vegetation does the same, but for, well, vegetation. Which brings us to the real ace in the hole of quality settings. Changing the master texture limit lets you do things like this. You see, each number over 1 on this setting reduces the maximum texture size by half. So if you had a texture that was a 1000 by 1000 square image, this setting would make that same texture just 4x4 four four pixels. This is one of the key features to the completely melted RuneScape look. Sure things still have textures with multiple colors, but every other ounce of detail is lost. I spent a while enjoying the game with these new horribly crunched visuals, but after a while I found myself asking if I could take it even further. I knew from my prior research that the game had an extremely complex custom lighting system that was created to emulate the look of games like Thief. So what if I took one of the key parts of that system, the Global Illumination Manager, and just turned it off? Well, I figured something would change, but I had no idea how drastic that difference would be. Taking what could possibly be the culmination of months or even years of hard work into this lighting system and just turning it off felt diabolical. It just goes to show how much effort they put into this aspect of the game that taking it out kills a core part of its visual identity. 
But hey, I'm not here to make Gloomwood look next gen. I just want to squish it down into some barely recognizable homage to early 3D games. While I was messing with the lighting system, I figured I'd remove all the light shafts and flares as well. These things are all over the place, but it's probably most noticeable with this simple before and after. With the bulk of the changes in, I had to add the classic low-res retro PS1 horror game effect to top things off. That is, taking the in-game cameras that are rendering to the screen and putting an intermediary step in there. So instead of the game rendering at, say, 1920 by 1080 it's rendering the camera output onto a tiny texture, say, 640 by 360 and then showing that on the screen. The effect of this being that everything gets a whole lot more pixelated. Now with everything looking so drastically different from the base game, I was curious about how my changes affected the game's performance. I mean, my original concept for this video Video was being able to run Gloomwood on a really bad PC, which I kinda lost track of while I was enjoying ruining the graphics. Things obviously looked worse, but was the game running any better at all? I had to figure out some way of objectively measuring this. Now I could import some third party asset that shows FPS and memory usage while in game, but I decided to waste even more of my time writing one from scratch. Given that I wasn't using the Unity editor for this project, that meant anything I wanted to do with the UI would have to be made purely in code. I started off by writing a simple FPS counter to show in the top left, which was basically just a crappy version of the one you'd see in Fraps, if anyone still remembers that program. It was useful for tracking performance, but it didn't tell me anything about how the game was using memory, so I added in the ability to track current and total memory allocation on the system. It doesn't just track Gloomwood, I mean the game wasn't actually using nearly 3 gigs of RAM, but it tracked everything on the computer as a whole. The real value in this was comparing one batch of settings against the other. I was pretty confident that my horribly mangled version of Gloomwood would outperform the game on high settings, but how would it compare to low settings? In order to test this thoroughly, I played through the entirety of the current early access build, you know, for research purposes. I had a great time with it, swapping settings on the fly and experiencing each part of the game in completely different ways with the opposing visual styles. One huge difference you might have noticed is how much easier the game is with the lighting demolished. It goes to show how much lighting can influence not only mood and atmosphere, but more immediate things like game design and how you approach a level. But all that aside, we're left with one burning question. Does this actually make the game run any faster? And the answer to that is, well, sort of. Here's a few comparison shots I took with my performance tracker on screen. The difference in FPS between high and low settings is very noticeable, even though the memory usage isn't all that different. Meanwhile, comparing Gloomwood's lowest settings to the abomination I created only resulted in small performance gains. 5 to 10 FPS here, a couple megabytes of memory there, Never a large jump, but it is clear that my settings at least gave it a small performance boost. The thing is, Gloomwood is already pretty well optimized as is. Just like the lighting system, it's clear that the devs have put a lot of work into optimizing the game to run on a huge variety of PCs. It's one of those things in game dev that's extremely hard to explain, because optimization can consist of working on just about every part of a game. From data and algorithms, to models, lighting, textures, and a whole mess of other things. It's kind of a wonder that any modern game runs at 60 frames per second nowadays, even though it's something we all take for granted. And hey, Gloomwood was running at almost double that before I cut down the rendering to the bare basics. Anyways, props to everyone who's been working on the game, because they've really been killing it so far, and I'm really pleased to see an indie immersive sim doing well for once. But speaking of immersive sims, did you know that I'm also working on an immersive sim? I know, I know, I just had to throw in the self promo at the end there, but it's better than me telling you about some electric toothbrush subscription service, right? Roll the footage. If you haven't already heard, I spent the past few years making my own survival horror immersive sim called Ad Infernum. The game opens with a massive car crash, leaving you stranded at an abandoned gas station in the middle of the desert. You find remnants of a cult, leading you down a series of rabbit holes through the station and surrounding caverns, all the while fighting demons, scrounging for supplies, and trying to piece together what's happening. The game is currently content complete, and I'm just putting the finishing touches on everything right now. 
If all goes well, I'm hoping to have a proper trailer and release date up in the coming months. If you like Gloomwood, Resident Evil, Prey, or similar titles, I think Ad Infernum will be right up your alley. I'll leave a link to Ad Infernum's Steam page down below if you want to wishlist it. If you want to talk more about the game, or even future videos, why not come hang out with us on the brand new FETV Discord? I'm always open to feedback and suggestions on there to help make better stuff in the future. But that's enough about my work for now. If you haven't played Gloomwood yet, seriously, go check it out. It's quickly becoming my favorite indie immersive sim and it's only getting better every month. This was a fun project and all, but I'm gonna leave the optimization to the professionals. On the other hand, if somebody wants to pay me to absolutely destroy their game, I'm all ears. Aww. But until next time, have a good one, folks. Treat a dear friend now, is it? <laughs>